I'm Jim Mathis. I've been involved in various aspects of the photography business for over 50 years. Today I want to give you some ideas to help you move from being just a picture taker to a person who can make some wonderful photographs. Making a photograph as opposed to just taking a picture is actually a four-step process. Those steps are choosing the subject, determining the treatment, capturing the image, and presenting the image. First of all, we have to choose the subject. The photograph is always about something. The old saying is, start by standing in front of something interesting or someone interested if you want to make interesting photographs. And by the way, this may not be just you standing in front of something. You need to get past the idea of every picture is about you. The old saying F8 and B there implies that the, the technical information, the exposure is not near as important as important as being in the right place at the right time. Sometimes that involves going somewhere. This, by the way, is not my living room. This is in the Louvre in Paris. This is a Chateau Chambord. We might call it a castle in the Loire Valley of France. But you don't have to go somewhere. This uh, my wife brought home some uh, peppers from the grocery store and I thought they were good looking so I, I did a portrait of them. This is uh, part of our Christmas decorations. So you don't really have to go very far to get some good photographs. You just have to look around and be aware and try to find things that are interesting that somebody else might be interested in seeing as well or either showing somebody something they haven't seen before or maybe showing them something in a new way. I like to uh, go out and listen to music. I'm a musician, so I often go out and take pictures at concerts and things if, if, the, if it's possible. Some places won't let you do that, but a lot of places will. Check ahead of time. And if the situation is right, opportunity presents itself. You get some wonderful photographs of, uh, of people playing music in all kinds of venues. This is my home state of Kansas. This is a, a typical scene you see driving down the highway in, in the state of Kansas. And uh, most of the time I seem to have inertia and don't have trouble getting stopped in the car and getting out and taking making photographs. Uh, this, I probably would advise this driving down the interstate, but if you're on a country road, good place to stop. This is also in Kansas. Uh, we don't have a lot of interesting rock formations, but we have a few. This is a place called Monument Rock, and it's just big uh, monuments kind of growing up out of the middle of the prairie. Of course, there's a lot of rock formations that go places like Utah and Colorado and uh, Arizona. This is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. This is in Nevada. I thought this was uh, pretty cool. This is kind of an old uh, uh, um, ghost town, they think they call it. There's a 60 Cadillac and a homemade camper. I thought it was pretty cool, particularly with the Ham's Beer sign and on the uh, water tower in the back. If you go to the Elk Reserve, Elk, elk Preserve in, in Wyoming, you see a lot of elk. So uh, I'm not nor normally a wildlife photographer, but sometimes you just can't help yourself. Once you determine the treatment, the next thing to do is to decide how you're going to present the subject. And once you determine the subject, you need to determine how you're going to treat it, is what I'm trying to say. So we know what we're going to photograph is elk or is it a ghost town or uh, is it musicians on a stage, whatever. The subject, the treatment is uh, mainly the composition, the angle of view, time of day, lens selection. Where do I stand? In other words, how's the best way to approach this subject? some rules of composition and you kind of need to know what they are. Uh, one of them is, is the rule of thirds. Uh, if you divide the, the frame into uh, third lines, vertical and horizontal, the most interesting part of the photograph is typically uh, along those lines or where they cross. So when in doubt, I try to put the subject on either one of those lines or where they cross, depending upon the subject. So this Photograph follows the rules of rule of thirds with the uh, car and the fence and so forth right on the bottom third line. Uh, this was in, in France in 1983 and all the time we were there, it was in January, it was fogged in and, and rainy and I was just out every day walking around trying to find something cool to photograph and saw this old Citroen DS sitting in front of the Eiffel Tower that was fogged in and so I just thought it was pretty cool looking. So made this photograph of it, and this turns out to be one of my favorite all-time photographs. I had this hanging in my office, uh, for, even though it was uh, 
40, 40 some years ago. So this is a Citroen sitting on the street in front of the Eiffel Tower. So is this. This is up to be a different model Citroen and it was a different time of year. Same street, same tower, both make of a car. This is a, a 2CV, the other one was a DS. This, the other one was the top of the line Citroen. This is the base model Citroen. But it's still an old one. It was still uh, just happened to be a beautiful day, a lot of clouds. So even though this is the same description, describer as the previous one, it's a completely different picture. Uh, the Eiffel Tower is pretty iconic, and you go to Paris, you can't help but photograph it, but there's lots of ways to do it. Uh, this is uh, close up with a wide angle lens looking up at it, so you can really see how big this thing really is. You can photograph it from the river on a river boat, you can photograph it at night, or you can also go to the top of the Eiffel Tower and photograph its shadow. So half a dozen different ways to pho photograph a very iconic uh, monument and uh, all completely different. So look, don't just stand in front of something and push the button. You got to walk around, think about it. What's an interesting way to present the subject? This is the uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. This is a panoramic I'm showing almost the whole wall. This is a close up. People often leave memorabilia and, and uh, personal items on the wall. So he, that kind of needs to tell the whole story. It, between the two, they pretty much they tell the, the story of the, of the wall. This is in Yellowstone. Uh, something a little different. I just pointed the camera straight at the sun. This was actually in the morning. It was a very cold morning, about eight below zero. And the sun was coming up over a frozen lake. And I just, uh, for some reason, really pointed the camera straight at the sun and just got a pretty spectacular picture. So once we determined the subject and decided uh, how we're going to treat it in terms of, you know, composition, you know, time of day, wide angle, telephone lens, and all that kind of thing. And then it comes to actually capturing the image, getting the picture into a digital file. In the old days, it was just putting it on a piece of film. Uh, now it's on a, a, a digital file. Uh, which is pretty straightforward. Any more of the cameras are so good that uh, uh, this is not the most difficult part of the process. There are actually five decisions you have to make, five settings, and modern cameras will do them automatically or you can do them manually however you want. And those uh, five settings are the aperture or the f-stop, the shutter speed, how fast the shutter is open, ISO or the sensitivity, we can adjust how much light it actually takes, uh, white balance, you know, the color of the light, and then finally focus. All four of those things have to be uh, set correctly. And uh, if you have a smartphone or a modern digital camera, 90% uh, of the time it, it works on automatic. Sometimes you have to override it. Sometimes it doesn't work. Most of the time it does. If you want to become a serious photographer, you really need to understand the exposure triangle. That's how the aperture and the shutter speed and the ISO work together. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here about that because there's a lot of information about it. But you really need to understand it and have a, a good grasp of how these things work and how each one affects the photograph. If you're a musician, you need to understand uh, key signatures and time signatures and chord progressions and things like that. It's kind of that same kind of thing. You really need to have a, this under your belt uh, before you can move ahead very far. One of the big changes in the last few years is how cameras are capable of shooting in very low light uh, because of uh, high ISO, high sensitivity. This picture was uh, taken at night, so a bunch of horses running. They were all moving pretty fast. Uh, the exposure was like 500th of a second at f6.3, uh, but a 300 millimeter lens at ISO 16,000. Don't be afraid to crank a ISO if you have a digital SLR or mirrorless camera that goes up to 20, 30,000 ISO, that's what it's for. It's for action at night, low light, and uh, we couldn't have got this photograph any other way 20 years ago. Cameras come in all shapes and sizes. Find the one you love, that's the one you want to buy. People ask me what kind of camera to buy, and I said, buy the one you like. That's all there is to it. If it makes you smile when you pick it up, uh, that's the one you want. This is me over the last 
four decades or so, except the one in the lower right is my wife. And I just throw this in to show that uh, not particularly partial to any brand of camera. There's one, two, three, about six different uh, manufacturers here. They're all great. Never met a camera I didn't like. The fourth step, after we chose the subject, chose the treatment, got the image captured, then it's time to present the image. If you don't take it out of the camera, out of your phone, uh, you're not done. Is a photograph, is it really a photograph if nobody can see it? And if it's hidden away on a, a flash drive or a smart card somewhere, it's not a photograph yet. Ansel Adams said the negative is the score, the print is the performance. Modern terms, I'd say the digital file is the score, the visual image is a performance. We have to, uh, the final step is actually getting the camera on, or getting the photograph under the computer and uh, doing some work on it, which we call post-production, uh, to make it uh, the type of picture that we want to, want to show. It's almost never exactly right coming out of the camera. Sometimes it is, but not often. Plus in the post-production phase, uh, we have an opportunity to do some different kind of things. This this is a, a picture of a, of a giraffe. I shot this oh maybe 50 years ago at the zoo. Uh, I was on a slide. I got the old slide out, scanned it. Decided it looked better if you had a little color. Maybe it's holding a rose. So grabbed the rose off of a stock photo file, photo sharing site, and put it in the giraffe's mouth. Thought it looked pretty interesting. This is an old limousine we saw down in Clarksdale, Arizona. I'm in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And it was rainy that day, kind of rainy and kind of a blah day, but I thought the car was pretty cool. So we didn't shot some pictures of it. And then when I got home, put it on the computer and I started working on it to make the photograph I really wanted, uh, which is this one. So I, I started by uh, taking all the color out of the background and then uh, increasing the contrast, making the sky a little more ominous looking just by darkening in it. And then, but the, I kept the color in the car. In fact, then I increased the saturation in the car to make it more colorful. So I, I think this is a, uh, a real fun photograph. This guy is, uh, I think he's actually a county commissioner down in central part of my state. And he likes to wear cowboy clothes when he goes out in public. And this was actually made in a parking lot. He was standing out talking to a couple other guys in, in uh, front of a car. And uh, when I got home, I converted it to black and white and painted the background in. I decided that instead of having just a sky or plain background, I, I uh, darkened the sky. Actually, I just painted in with a, a black brush on Photoshop and thought it looked pretty good. This is a, a picture of a bus down in Austin, Texas. The, on the left is how it looked right out of the camera. Uh, the one on the right is after I worked on it just a little bit. I made uh, increased the saturation, the contrast, and um, converted the sky to orange from blue. And, and then the middle picture is the way it looked on the cover of a magazine. Got a lot of mileage out of this old bus and uh, been on the cover of a magazine and several galleries and things. But uh, it wasn't terrible right out of the camera, but uh, I was able to uh, spice it up a little bit and juice it. Just uh, a little bit of work. This is a lady playing bass. I, this was actually at a, at a, a show, show, showcase, and I was on the front row. I tilted the camera to give it a little stronger angle. Thought it looked pretty good. And then when I got home, I worked on it some more and uh, posterized it, You know, reduced it to just a couple colors, added grain. I think this uh, this makes a perfectly good poster. Uh, there's some space at the top where I could add some words and be a good poster for a music festival or all kinds of things. It's kind of a similar deal. Uh, this was at a, at a performance, and when I got home, I just uh, posterized it and kind of just did a little, a little artwork on it and make it a little more dramatic looking. This is a place down in Amarillo, Texas called the Cadillac Ranch. Uh, it's actually a, a public uh, art display along the highway, but there's also a RV park right nearby where they have a bunch of old Cadillacs sitting around. And this is pretty much the way it looked. It was middle of the afternoon when we were there and uh, plain sky. So shot a few pictures. And when I got home, I, I 
worked on a little bit and just a slide about a cropping, uh, super saturating the car, the sky, uh, made it pretty dramatic looking. I think I like this a lot. Of course, sometimes you don't want to change the picture. You want to improve it. This, uh, the one on the right is the camera original. Uh, we were on, going down the, the Seine in Paris and I saw the tire go by and behind us. So I shot a picture of one of my friends and, uh, uh, it was a little bit dark, a little bit crooked. So when I got home, went on the right as the corrected version. I was able to lighten her faces. In fact, actually I lightened the whole thing quite a bit and then uh, worked on the sky a little bit and straightened it up. It was tilted. So got the, the one on the left was uh, the edited version, which was uh, what I had in mind. Similar deal, different trip. Uh, the one on the right is the, is the original shot with a wide angle lens. It was raining and I was kind of ran out in the middle of the street to grab this for, for the light changed. And uh, of course, if a wide angle lens looking up at a building, everything kind of leans in, which is one of my pet peeves. So I knew it was going to, I could fix it. So when I got home, I straightened everything up. Actually, I lightened the building a little bit in the middle, darkened the sky and got a pretty presentable picture of the one on the left. Uh, we were in Michigan going to, uh, across to Mackinac Island and uh, on a ferry. I saw another ferry coming coming our way as we passed this lighthouse. So I shot about half a dozen photos fairly quickly within maybe three or four seconds. And the sequence you see is on the bottom. You see the, the boat going past the lighthouse. So I chose the second from the left and increased the contrast, took some of the blue out, dropped in a different sky and uh, made a, what I, I think is a pretty decent photograph on the top. So you don't always uh, get exactly what you want in the camera, but you get something that's, that's work, good to work with. I usually figure the camera originals are, are like the starting place to, to get a great photo. And there are also other things you can do. Uh, this was a photo made with a wide lux on black and white plus X film about 40 some years ago. And then I hand colored it back uh, in the pre Photoshop days. Uh, uh, it was common to take black and white photographs and color them with Marshall oil paint. Uh, in fact, this was a common practice for maybe a hundred years from, you know, 1800s to into the almost 2000 is we would uh, just hand color a photograph and it has a different effect. And I think it's pretty interesting. So not too long ago, I got the original negative out and scanned it. And this time I colorized it uh, using Photoshop. There's a neural filter which says colorize on it. And it, this is not right out of the Photoshop, right out of the neural filter, but uh, it was a really good starting spot. So I can go back and do a little more work on it. And I think it's pretty nice. And then not long ago, we went back and I thought I'd re kind of recreate that photograph. And of course, I didn't have the wide lux camera anymore and wasn't exactly in the right spot, but you can see it's kind of the same street, same scene. So finally, what are we going to do with all these pictures? First of all, I edit them down when I, you know, if I'm out shooting uh, on a vacation, I shoot 500 pictures, say, I choose about 50 to 75 to work on. And, and uh, the, what they always say is just show you the best of your best. Don't show the 80% of the pictures that aren't very good show the 10 or 15% that are wonderful and then make them even better. And one of the ways you can show them is in a photo book for a long time. And my wife and I have been making, uh, printing photo books about 20 years. And this we found that's the best long-term accessibility of photographs is in a printed book. Paper ink on paper is the most archival long lasting uh, system we have for saving photographs or anything text for that matter. So there are some of the books we've made over the years. We, uh, I use this is the covers and these are pretty big, pretty big. Most of these are 12 by 12 or, or 10 by 13, something like that. Uh, like to make uh, large format books and, uh, with some of our prized possessions, we have a whole bookshelf full of, uh, photo books that we've made over the last 20 years. And like I say, they're, they're not all of our pictures. They're the best of the best. And uh, I think they're, it's really a, a wonderful thing to do.
I also like to hang pictures on the wall. This is in our living room. Uh, this is a 30 by 40. Uh, I shot this from the middle of the Colorado River on a boat in Utah. This is a 40 by 60 that we've had hanging in our home for about 30 years. This is Venice. Uh, this is made actually on New Year's Day, 1991. Prints faded a little. Probably I could reprint it, but uh, that's not much different than the way it looked because it was raining that day. This is a like a 24 by 36 print of uh, sheep. Uh, I, I made this photograph in England, and my wife loves sheep, so this is actually in her office. This is a photograph of Yosemite we have hanging over our sofa in our living room. This is, I think, 36 by 48. So, you know, to me, the bigger the better. If you, if you have great pictures, uh, you know, a lot of photo labs make great, the great results. So. Uh, Make sure you have your, your walls curved with your favorite photographs, not just little ones. Little, little ones will be here. My idea of a little photograph is anything smaller than 16 by 20. And this, uh, this is the one you saw a little bit ago. This is, this is like 24 by 36 or so of the Eiffel Tower. This is my office. If you get an opportunity to show photographs in public, don't pass it up. This is actually at a pizza store pizza place uh, not too far from us they called and said you want to uh, put up some pictures for a while so uh, for a couple of months I had large photographs of musical instruments and uh, so I always uh, if anybody gets an opportunity to uh, let me hang their pictures my pictures up in public spaces I take it you can also do art fairs a lot of people really enjoy doing art fairs did that for a number of years uh, opportunity to sell some pictures, get your name out, have a lot of good conversations with people. A couple years ago, my wife and I decided that we need to find a way to uh, uh, share our photographs and our travels with other people. So we set up the website, The Joy of Traveling, the joy of traveling not dot net, And then we write comments and thoughts on traveling along with our, our pictures as, uh, as we go around the country and some other ideas and about places to go. I hope this information was useful and I hope you were able to go out and make some great photographs today.